Hello, today I'm going to cover hand techniques, uh, mainly punches, but we're also going to cover the blocks as well. But we're not actually going to cover the blocks as such. Now this is one that you've all been waiting for, you can stay sat on your city if you want, although you might want to stand up and just try a few bits as we do. Right, so what we're going to look at today is punching to start off with. So say if I was in a walking stance, a step forward and punch, we're going to cover that technique. Now the first bit that we're going to do is rather basic, but when you're punching in line working in your patterns, your hand on your hip is palm up. So as you punch, that goes out, and just as you punch with the front two knuckles, that twists. Now there's a purpose to that. If you have your hand that way and take it from your hip, one, it doesn't feel right, and two, there's no power, because this is all about power, generating power. To quote one of the cartoon characters of my childhood, I have the power! <laughs> so, to generate the first bit of power, we do a twist. So from here, as we punch out, we twist. And what that twist does is it tenses all the muscles, but it allows us to throw that punch out, twist at the last minute, get the power in. If you go straight from there, yeah, you'll punch, but you'll not have much power. Now the second part of punching, and it goes the same for blocks. If you do a rising block, last minute, twist. If you do a out to forearm block, last minute, twist. That gives you the power, the muscle strength. The second part of punching is the control of the movement, which is two parts. One is that you mainly when we're doing line work and patterns that you punch dead centre. And two, that you get this relaxed and tense bit of the control. So what you don't want to be doing when you're doing your patterns is looking at what other people are doing and just sort of like throwing your punches. So you want control of where they're going, control of where they finish up. They relax, tense. So that covers this arm to start off with. To get the power even more, you use what we call the reaction hand. So you might have noticed that I've been putting this hand out and bringing it back. Now that's a reaction hand. It brings the body into equilibrium, which means that you balance. So if you just punch like that with nothing, you, you're, not, you're not centered. Whereas if you bring that back, you've got the double movement there. So your reaction hand, in nearly everything you do, you'll have that reaction force. So say if I was doing a low block, I'd then lift that before I did a punch to give me that reaction hand. If you're doing a rising block, that is my reaction force against that. If I'm doing a middle block, same thing again. I've got that reaction force. The next bit to give you the power, which you'll notice I've been doing, because I can't stop, I can't do it without doing, is hips and waist. That is where probably 60% of the power on your punches comes from, is this twist with the waist. So if I go into low block and go into punch, I pull that hip back and push everything out. So I'm not punching with my arm, I'm punching with my body. Everything, including right down to the feet, everything comes in with this waist twist. So again, if I've done a low block, I step forward, I'm coming back, I'm even turning onto that foot, and then bang, everything goes, the hips, the whole lot drives this out. Especially if you're breaking, or anything like that, if you want a real powerful punch, everything goes into that. The next bit is breath control, which comes to its own on patterns. The <coughs> Breathing out, tenses the core up, brings you to, again, more power. What we're looking at is to put as much power into these moves as possible. Even a rising block. Breathe out, get the core tensed up while you're doing your hip and everything else. A further part of getting as much power as possible is speed. 
to get speed. Your muscles need to be not relaxed, but they need to be not tense until you twist. That allows you to get the speed in. If you tense these muscles, you slow down. If I tense everything up, I'm slow. If I relax and just tense up at the last minute, I increase my speed by about 50%. You've got to have this relaxed motion and tensed just at the last minute. And the last part is the difficult to explain, you've got to practice, is uh, what's popularly called now the sine wave. And what the sine wave does is it puts the weight of your body mass into the movement. So on top of the speed and the twist of the wrist to get the muscles up, you bring the mass of your body into everything. Now, the sound wave is often described as down, up and down. Now, I want you to rethink the first bit. And don't think of it as moving down. Think of it as relax. So... You're going to relax, then you're going to go up, and then you're going to go down. The, the reason behind the sine wave is to get your body mass. So, say if I'm punching from a low block, first thing I do, relax slightly, let that knee bend, I come up, and down. So as well as my hip twist, I've got the whole of my upper body weight driving that punch into position. Now there's certain moves that I really want to stress is relax up and down. Say if you're in rear foot stance, you won't go down. You, you, you'll relax and then up and down. So you've got to try and think of that as a more of a relax. If you go down on that relax, if I was in walking stance and I go down, up and down. So you get a sort of down, up, down. Very much depends what move you're in. If you're in L stance, garden block, to go into another garden block, you go down, up and down. That gets your body mass into it. But the relax is quite an important part of it. If you didn't, if you just try and do the up and down, so say if I've done a punch and I'm tensed up because I've just punched and I go up and down, I'm not getting that full movement. I want to get the little bit of relax to get this hip round and then really drive into the next move. Once you try it a few times, you'll feel it. But like I say, if you don't do the relax, you just go and it becomes very, you lose the speed and the general feel of it all. You need to have that just a little second just to get the hips round to relax and get into the next move. If you follow all these points, your patterns will look better and crisper and your line work will be perfect. Um, obviously we do line work in gradient, but like I say, put everything together. Twist, control, think where it's going to end up. When you're doing blocks, I'm going to do an inner forearm block. I know I want to finish it there. I don't go, I'm just, oh, wherever. So you're controlling the movement, finishing it where you want to, using that twist to finish where you want to move. Reaction hand, always a reaction hand. Even if we're sitting stance, punching, you would use the reaction hand. And again, sitting stance, punching, relax, up, Relax, get your hips back, punch. So the whole thing comes in. So you've got the reaction, you've got your hips. Any moving forward, you can get really good hips. Get the hips to drive it in. Breath control. That's one that uh, maybe I didn't even really start thinking properly about breath control till I got to Red Belt. But that's one that you use to strengthen everything up. It's also good to get into the habit of breath control. So if you're sparring, 
as you do a move, especially if you're punching in sparring, that is when you're most liable to get hit. If you can breathe out, tense the core up, that gives you the muscle mass and the tenseness of the muscle to protect yourself. You can take, if you're tense, you can take a lot bigger hit than if you're not. So you use that breath control, get used to using the breath control. Speed, make sure the move is relaxed until you do the twist at the end. So you're getting the speed into the movement. And then the last thing is relax, up, down. Get everything together and your patterns will be perfect. I know this is quite a short one. Well, I hope it's quite a short one. It's probably longer than I intended. Um, and I hope you find something useful out of it. And I shall see you for now.